looking for something. A new way, a new understanding, a connection, some comfort. You've got questions, and Light on Living puts the spotlight on all the answers so you can shine. Lift and lighten the load of life's challenges and learn simple and easy ways to live a healthy, happy life. You'll gain insight and start to see things in a new way that motivates you. You're invited to hear new, see different, and feel more as Lisa shines the light on living. Welcome everyone to Light on Living. I'm Light Coach Lisa, holistic nutritionist and life coach, helping to lighten the load of life's challenges. And as if the word beauty and love doesn't just make you feel good and help you get through life's challenges already, we have such a special guest that has just surprise showed up in my life and just everything that I've seen from her that she's put out that she's doing has just like the word beauty is just not even enough and I know that with everything going on in all of our lives at all different times there's just something about art and poetry and music and everything that's just accepting and loving just fills our lives and makes things just a little better. So I have the most wonderful guest here today. Her name is Corinne Holt, and I'm going to read a little bit about her to share with you guys so you know who we're talking to, and then she's going to share beautiful, fantastic stuff. So Corinne Holt is an artist, poet, and spiritual teacher, welcoming people to pure presence, to feel the magic of being human, experiencing one's true nature while living the physical expression of it. Her history is diverse. Preparation for helping people clear the weight of their burdens so that they may consciously remember their benevolent, infinite power. Merging her experience as a professional artist, healer, writer, and coach, Corinne's refined intuition makes her a strong ally with the call of one's soul. That's so beautiful. This translates to helping people gain clarity with the things that matter most along their journeys. So, Corinne, I am just giving you the most warmest welcome to today's show. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. I tell you, you are a blast of fresh air and bright sunshine. <laughs> oh, oh, my goodness. The, your entire, just even your, I, I want to go to the website as well, but it's everything. It's your, it's your brand. It's your company. Attune to love. I, I just wanted you to start by asking, when, you, when I read that, I mean, I could take, like, um. <laughs> I seem to love me. It's a, a, not a command, but a direction, a verb, or just like what we are, who we are. Where? What is that? What is that? Where does that come from? <laughs> oh, it. You know, I've said it a thousand times, ten thousand times. I've written it, and every time it comes out of my mouth or I feel it in my heart, I I feel a shift. Oh. It's just there is something that you really acknowledge that there is a magic to it that it brings tears when I think about the moment in 2008 that it came to me. I was writing a book, and it, I thought it was going to be the title of that book, and fortunately, I didn't use it on that because that was my practice book <laughs> and a kind of a life, life review for me and uh, really just meant for my own kind of process, and so, and it also gave me another almost 10 years to go really deep with that, the meaning of that. And um, and experience it. You know, when we start talking about meanings and definitions, we tend to get in our head a lot. But to really just sit with that and and experience what it means on, on that really deep visceral level. And so, but I did happen to look in the dictionary about that word attune. We know what it is. We feel what it is. But I thought, mm. and it it really is coming into harmonious relationship with something. Okay. So if you're attuning to a group, you're coming into a harmonious relationship with the group or your family or your workplace. So in this case, it's attuning, it's coming into harmonious relationship with love. And then I was looking at love and was writing about this. And then when poetry started, um, love not only meant the warm expression of it that we know as human beings, but this very um, expanded definition, if you will, uh, as an acronym, L for limitless, organizing, vital essence. And so when you think about that, I mean, isn't that God, or the God of our understanding, or, uh, yes. or, or creation, or creator, or whatever, you know, uh, one likes to, feels comfortable mm -hmm. um, expressing that. It, it's limitless. 
you know, and it's organizing. And we see that everywhere. Look at our physical world. The energies of, of creation are organized. How else would we have a liver that functions perfectly and lungs and, you know, our brain? And it all has this local, um, this intelligence that runs it without our mental meddling. And so it's organizing and vital essence. It's what brings animation to our lives. And so now when I was attuning to love, it wasn't just attuning to the warmth and the positive behaviors or whatever to others, Mm -hmm. but it was also coming into harmonious relationship with the infinite. Right. Wow. That is, and I think you use that really well, the the word to go into it deeper and the depths of it, because as I hear you uh, just go deeper, literally in the word love and then to its essence, um, you really do explore and you help and you walk through, um, how we get to explore our organized self, like deeper of who we are. And I, I was watching, you have this beautiful uh, Poetic Ascensions Facebook Live series that you just started. <laughs> and, yeah. and and when you went, you were going through the series of those questions, and that's a, who am I is such a, a, a vague but deep and honest question. And I love that you're helping the people to even start like, how do you even ask that question? And I, if you could share with us how you, because I think you do it in such a way. I can toss this one in here, too. You explain um, at one point, I think I was read it somewhere, what oh, to be awakening, like awakening or to be awakened is. And I've been looking for a really easy one to help people do that. And I could love if you could share that, the awakening part, and how do we even ask, who am I? Mm-hmm. So let me start with the who am I question. And that's very, very common in um, those on a kind of spiritual path. And my experience with it is getting beyond the labels of, you know, my name is this, and I'm a a woman, and, you know, my race, my location in the world, and uh, mother, wife, you know, sister, friend, and all the labels that we um, use in our world, practically speaking, and we need them, and they're good. (laughs) But, we, you know, we're in that all the time. And so it's like going deeper is now moving beyond those identifiers and and then saying, okay, wow, who am I beyond this, the tangible part that you can touch? And then what, and then this poem, which uh, I did share on the Facebook Live Sunday, um, revealed. And so just to say a little bit about the poetry, the poetry is just a reflection of my attuning to, to love, the limitless organizing vital essence. And <clears throat> so that the poetry wasn't just an art form, but it was a, became universal spiritual teachings. And they gave insights that if I tried to share in my head, it would have never happened. So I just was, <clears throat> this writing kind of came without my, I didn't, wasn't, trying to go for poetry, but it just kind of unfolded in my writing, <clears throat> things started to rhyme, and uh, and I was like, wow, okay, and so the who am I came to me that says, who am I suggests a you and a me, defining us as separate entities, relatively speaking, it appears as such until that you doesn't feel enough to quench the thirst for seeking truth, remembering through the veil imbued. For whatever reason, I feel poignantly led to adventure beyond the talk in my head. Conditioned mind speak is a surface glance that keeps me bound to a rigid stance of believing I'm only this thing you can touch. And yet, in my core, I sense there's much more. Attuning to love, I see what is true. What we are is more relevant than who. Mm. And so this comes back to you now leading into the awakening question. And yes, I am this person we'd say, who, Corinne Holt. And more importantly, what am I? Mm. And what we realize is I am and you are and we are this limitless, organizing, vital essence. And that's what you experience when you get quiet and still and relax your nervous system. And then you attune to that and you say, wow, I'm, I am the skin and this, this, this beautiful human being, but I'm also this other infinite part, 
and there we are one, like two sides of a coin, a heads and a tail. They call them different things, but they are actually all the one coin. And so the awakening is the realization of that. So I am this body, mind, the physical form, but I'm also this infinite wisdom and limitless organizing vital essence. And so when the mind and the body wakes up to that truth, to me, that's the awakening. That at least was for me, that was the experience. That is so helpful. And, and again, I'm going to use the word beautiful. I, I believe you actually just helped me to really um, complement or pair the for me and my my mind went to wow when i can get if i can get quiet and i can realize that i'm limitless i i feel so empowered like literally anything is possible right empowered and grounded yes and so you know some people would say woo, woo, you know whatever out there in the stars and the cosmos but right. but when you are consciously looking that you become expanded but you also become grounded at the same time and so that's that's the best of all worlds and so the you know poetic ascension is the going out and exploring you know the self beyond the the form self and then and then the full circle is coming back around descending and living that you know as you said in the um in the bio there the ultimate is living and honoring and loving this beautiful expression of being human, but all the while knowing that you are that, that infinite, yeah. that infinite one. It, it's, mm-hmm. the, um, the, the grounding is something I think that a lot of people need help on. We're going to go to commercial, but when we come back, I think that would be a terrific place to start is if you could help us get grounded. Okay, for sure. Okay. The best of the holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio, IOM FM. Humanity Healing International is a small nonprofit with a big dream. Since 2007, HHI has been working tirelessly to bring help to communities with little or no hope. Our projects are not broad mandates, nor are they overnight solutions, but they bring the reassurance that no one is alone and that someone cares. To learn more, please visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. My name is Victor Furman. Some call me The Voice. I've always been fascinated with human nature, spirituality, science, and the crossroads at which they meet. Join me Wednesdays at 8 p.m. Eastern on OM Times Radio, and we'll explore these topics and so much more on Destination Unlimited. Welcome back to The Cat Show. Up next, we have Nico. Nico is a member of the Shelter Pet Group. That's right, a group known especially for their sunspot sleeping, ball chasing, leg rubbing, and of course, companionship. Just look how she struts. It's like she owns the place. And see how she curls up and cuddles her person. The pitch on her purring is simply perfect. Nice one. Fantastic cat. But really the best way to know an amazing shelter pet like Nico is to meet one. Visit the shelterpetproject.org today. Adopt. Brought to you by Maddie's Fund, the Humane Society of the United States, and the Ad Council. We're here, and we're sharing a very special time with Corinne Holt, and her book is actually coming out just about the holiday seasons. It's called Poetic Ascension. Is it Poetic Ascension with an S, actually? I'm sorry. Oh, sorry? Oh, is it Poetic Ascensions or Poetic Ascension? Oh, just a Poetic Ascension, no S. Okay, perfect. I want to make sure I say that right because I'm already excited for that book to come out. Um, just before we, we went to break, we were talking. I love you said so you're right, when you when you're consciously exploring and looking around, it's not that you're like you said, out in the stars, all airy fair, you are grounded. And I want to ask, what does that look like to be grounded and how do we stay grounded or get grounded if we're not? 
Mm. Right. So what happens is when you're stressed, which so many of us are, I mean, there's a lot going on out there, <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of stimulus, a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of stuff for the mind to go here and there and all over the place. And, and so when the mind gets really scattered and ignoring its infinite self, mm. it gets, it gets it, you know, scattered. And um, sometimes we call that spacey because we're looking all over and, and right, it's not grounded. Mm. And we know groundedness because we feel it in our body. We feel centered. We feel there's a certain amount of, you know, peace. And rightness, you know, as opposed to like if you're walking on ice with leather sole shoes, right? It's like, whoa, <laughs> you're very slippery and whoa, you know, unnerved and so and anxious. So a very, very simple way is just to consciously bring your presence into your body somewhere, anywhere. You could start with your feet. I mean, because that's what's on the ground. Right. So if you brought all of your attention to your feet and just felt your toes, feel your big toe. And then your second toe and your third and on so on and so on and so forth, the ball of your foot, you know, and what, if you have shoes on, feel, wiggle your toes, feel them in your shoes. If you're on the ground, feel the ground. I mean, it's something as simple because what you're doing is you're bringing your pro, pure presence back into your body. And so that you're bringing it back to yourself and then, and so that pulls it all together. And then once you do that, then you're creating more space to be fully present with your whole being. And if you have the time, you can then, you know, bring your attention up your legs and throughout the rest of your body. And, I mean, you can get grounded doing that literally in 10 or 15 seconds. It'll make a big difference. I literally um, feel like as, as I'm listening to you say that, of course, I'm doing it because, I'm, you know, I'm following your lead here. And I was thinking I could feel my own nervous system just kind of calming down. Yeah. Because, uh, yes, because right. as you're saying, that focus and awareness is actually calming that down. Um, it's interesting. I love that you just said it creates a space because here we are, we're, we not spacey, but creating a space to, and I was going to ask you if it would be fair to say like to then let love lead. And I, I read that, that you, you wrote that it's let love lead. And it's a picture of this heart and he's being taken by the hand or he's taking a, a girl by the hand and leading. Um, when we, when we create that space then uh, um, grounded and we're centered and we're not focusing, but having awareness, is it that we suddenly just feel the love lead us or we bring it forth or kind of call it in? Mm. I think it can be both, you know, and, and probably a thousand other things, but <laughs> right. with, you know, with my experience of it, it's first, typically we call it in because we're not necessarily feeling it. Wow. And so, so also the grounding is when you bring your attention to things, a quick tool, beautiful little tool, is the self-inquiry or the deep questions. Mm-hmm. And so I found if I don't know something, like I don't, if I'm like, I don't know what it would feel like to be grounded right now, mm-hmm. you can just put it out there to your infinite self. What would it feel like to feel really grounded in my body and my mind and my emotions? Oh. So we don't have to know and go looking for and necessarily do an exercise and hey if you don't have an exercise that works by all means do it but sometimes we're in that space where we don't know what to do and so the question is this the statement is i would really love to know what that would feel like right now Mm. to be grounded in my body and so there's i guess that's more of a command than a question it could be either way what would it feel like to be grounded Um, But it is that still coming, you don't have to know, but the desire to know can be stated in whatever way. Um, Let me see what else came in That's actually, that's extremely helpful. Um, I'm just thinking about that, right? You could use that in in so many things. And I recall reading something you call facing in. Is that kind of what we'd be doing? Mm, Very much so, facing in. So then back to the questions of what would it mean to let love lead, you know, in my life, in this moment, in any moment, in in the traffic, uh, going into the meeting, uh, you know, to the dentist, right? (laughs) Whatever, you know, in in life, what would it mean to let love lead right now? And it may express itself differently in every situation. And so now we're living in the question. 
And so the body mind is asking its infinite self, both sides of the coin, you know, the one thing, working together in this dance. And the body mind says, wow, I realize I have a finite view of things. Now, infinite part of myself, I'm asking for your guidance. What would it mean in this moment to let love lead? You know, sometimes it might be to be silent. Sometimes it might be to be very expressive. Sometimes it might be something, you know, to be entertaining. I mean, it could be any different flavor or expression. But the thing is, is we can let the mind relax when it doesn't feel it has to do the job. And so when it's really connected, it's attuned, it's tapped into its infinite side, it can just follow along in the dance. It doesn't have to know the steps. Mm. And so if we've, anyone who's ever done the, has, has partner danced, um, especially yeah. the us women, we, you know, we know what it means to let someone else lead and we just feel them and then follow. And yes, we do know the steps somewhat if we've been to, you know, dancing classes, but I've danced with people that I didn't know the dance at all. And I had to just fully surrender, right. you know, and ask my body to, you know, you know, trust them. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and, and trust that your feet are going to um, do the right things. And even if we look awkward and fumble around. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? Here's what happens. If you're trying to figure out in your mind how to do this dance, you're trying to remember like, back to a time when you took a class or you danced with something, and you're trying to mentally figure it out, it will be a disaster. Because now your presence is in your head that doesn't really know. It, hasn't, it doesn't remember. But if you let it happen and then you just uh, you tune into the lead body and the, the the fine movements and the intention now when you're not in your head and you just let your body flow with it and you're not trying to figure it out then it happens you know and so it's that full surrender yeah. so it's the same it's i use that metaphor because i've experienced that in, in dancing where um I didn't know most of the dances, but I could just surrender myself and and tune into those movements and follow along. And so that's how it is in life when we are having the mind surrender to the uh, the infinite part of ourselves to say, okay, in this moment, what would it mean to let love lead? And I will carry that out. You know, I will carry out that expression. And so, you know, you know, maybe the infinite self says. Dear, I just be silent and be present. That's the highest call in this moment, all right? Mm-hmm. Or, or you, let let someone else um, speak their grief or what have you. And so that's the thing. We never have to show up going, oh, my gosh, what am I going to do? To, you know, we can just be tapped in and know that we're going to know in the moment what's the highest and best thing. I would like to ask you, because oh, it's so funny we're talking about dance lessons and stuff. I Years ago, I signed up for dance lessons with my father, and it was East Coast Swing. And it was so funny because I, he was the man, and I'm the woman, and I was to lead, but he wasn't doing it right. And so I decided that I was going to lead from the woman's perspective, though, so I was doing them both. But it was exhausting because I'm doing both roles, and I I didn't feel safe. I didn't trust him enough because I knew he wasn't going to do it, in my opinion. <laughs> and, and I wondered, and it's so funny because I look at that as a, a greater analogy of life. What do we do if we are not control freaks, but we are we're too scared to we don't feel safe enough to surrender? How mm. how do we? Is that yeah yes? I'd love to hear that. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, it really is. You know, it comes back to what I was saying earlier is we don't know, you know, I, how can you find an you know, answer, where in a book can you find how do I surrender? Well, you know, we can share experiences and that's, hey, that's great. That's a great place to start. I think for each of us, because it's going to mean something different for each of us and show up differently, is to come back to that question what would it mean for me right now to surrender to my highest wisdom? And every one of us could ask that question and get a different yeah. sense of it, a different experience with that. And 
So, or the command, the loving command, not the bossy command, but the loving Great. command. <laughs> I, I want to know. I want to know what that means for me right now. Mm. The surrender. I'm asking for that knowingness to come through me and to experience that. And it may not come with words at all. It's just a feeling or sensation. And then the, you know, the knowingness doesn't have words. It's just, you know, you know that you know, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the easiest way is just to ask. Ask, put it out there to, to the high self, to source, to your soul, whatever you want to call that. And I love what it. Would there, that I love that it's always starting the exploration does start with a question. And you're right, because I think a lot of us, we think we should have the answers or know the answers. And we're almost too afraid to go there. And I I, I saw on your on your Facebook live feed there, which was fabulous, by the way, I it was just a lovely thing to have in, in the in my day, you know. And you you said something which I've heard many people say, and I wondered how this occurs. And what you said was, um, you're there to hold space for another and I thought about that I thought how that's that's a wow like what a gift first of all like that's an amazing thing to offer somebody and how does that happen what does that look like and what it what is the experience of holding space for another on both sides Hmm. so it's coming back into that you know that coming into the moment where you're really tapped in to your high self and your your mind is saying okay I really I don't know how I should show up here, you know, but I, my intention is to hold the space and help me know the best way I can do that, you know, in this moment. And so it, it start, starts with that question and it starts with that <laughs> memory of the beginning of the call, that harmonious being in har- the body mind, because they're connected, is in harmonious relationship with the infinite part of ourselves. And on that, I know that commercial is going to sneak right in, so I didn't want it to do that. But when we come back, let's go back into the harmonious relationship. I love that. Thank you. Yes. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Ascending Hearts is no ordinary dating site, but a spiritual dating site with a purpose, to link you with your soulmate. We engineer the serendipity so you can trust that you will attune with someone that has the same matching vibration as you. Ascending Hearts, the conscious dating site for the spiritually aware. Try Ascending Hearts for free. AscendingHearts.com Grab a cup of tea or a glass of wine and tune in for Inspired Conversations with publisher Linda Joy on Tuesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern. Linda creates sacred space for leading female luminaries, empowering authors, heart-centered female entrepreneurs, coaches, and healers. A soulful venue where guests openly share the fears and obstacles they've overcome, wisdom and lessons learned, and the personal journey that led them to the transformational work they do in the world. Inspired conversations to empower you on your path to authentic, soulful living. So I'm a cat, and I just moved in with this new human, and she's got this little toy she's always playing with all day long. Tap, 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 bloop, bloop. She can't put it down. There it is. Oh, and get this. She even talks to it. Last week, she asked it for Chinese. And guess what? Egg rolls showed up like magic. Humans have cool toys. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the shelterpetproject.org. And we're back with Corinne Holt and her upcoming book, A Poetic Ascension, soon to be released. Very excited to, to read that and just experience it. Um, and before we left, we we're talking about harmonious relationships, and that's with ourselves and with others. 
Um, and I have to just, I have to highlight this because especially when all these, I love the cat, the pet commercials that come on. Um, I'm a huge pet lover and I, I really, I, I cannot express enough how much I do believe I have a very harmonious relationship with my animals uh, and they seem to really ground me and everything. But you are an artist and I saw that you have pet portraits. <laughs> yes, I do have a few of those. I, I, uh, I share your love for animals and I have one right now. Her name is Rosie. I don't, oh. I don't consider her a pet. I consider her my furry, one of my, my, one of my children, or my furry yes. baby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, but, um, right, so I kind of dabble in a lot of things, like wherever spirit moves me. I don't have a niche. I'm just kind of all, all over the place, <laughs> but I embrace that now. Yeah. You absolutely, you like, you paint, you create, you write, you, like, I could, the video, the, I just watched the, another video on, on your website, so if anybody would, can go to um, a tune to love that's t-o attuned to love.com you have this really cool thing it's a video now i'm reading it here now i didn't know it was called that but it's a poetry with benefits high vibe mini films that are a unique blend of conscious uh, verses visuals and music and all i have to tell you it really was i was kind of blown away i thought oh my gosh this is so cool did she do this <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, it's that you show up and you trust, you know, that your heart, you trust your heart and go with that flow of what wants to be expressed. And when the mind really gets out of the way and drops its judgments and opinions about, yes. you know, what's practical and or what, what it makes good sense or whatever, you know, um, then you can just let it come out. And so even though I wasn't planning on writing poetry you know it it happened and but I was in the flow of writing so I still had the flow going and so then as the the poet poetry started and they um they, they were spiritual teachings I was like wow this is poetry that has benefits right mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's not it's not just beautiful words but it like it it really invites you to go deeper and to understand you know the experience or start to experience attuning to love so there was that, and then I, you know, I was guided to put images. My the art that I had been doing. Who knew that that now mm -hmm. was going to have another application yeah. to go with these poems? So they became partners. So the art or the photography was, and I noticed that they there's a similar energy signature to them. Uh -huh. The energy signature of the art would match the energy signature of the poem. And then I thought, wow, what if I put music to it? And then I found music. And the same thing. Now the music would have the same basically energy signature. And so they worked very harmoniously. So there's that harmonious relationship, right? Yes, yes. And so when we're attuned to love, everything starts to fall into harmonious relationship, whether it's the elements you're creating or if it's the connections with the, the people that you're around. It's like, it's that order. It's that organizing vital essence, right? It, it shows up in everything. Everything comes in a harmonious relationship when the mind releases, surrenders to the guidance of the infinite self. And so that comes back to this, uh, just bringing this back around to the question you had yes. before the break about Thank you. holding the space. Yeah, no, I'm holding, it's all good. Holding the space is really just bringing the mind saying, the only thing I know I have to do is be fully present. Mm -hmm. You know, just be fully present. And then when I'm just fully present and I'm not trying to figure things out, I can hear the call of my soul. I can hear that divine guidance of whether to be silent or whether to speak up or whether to be, you know, whatever, you know, crack a joke, or whatever is called for in the moment to create flow and harmony in the moment. And so <clears throat> just holding the space means the mind uh, agreeing to just be fully present, to listen to that person deeply, to get curious, to be selfless, to, uh, ha if there's an agenda, the only agenda is to be of service. And those things are what create harmonious relationship. And so the mind doesn't have to try hard. It doesn't have to try hard to be a better person or, you know, um, think positive or whatever, which, hey, that's a beautiful thing. But now attuning is the kind of the reverse, that you don't try to develop yourself. You just decide to attune and listen to your soul 
And then when you do that, the personal development happens naturally Mm -hmm. because you just know what to do. And that knowing, you know, it's, I love that um, I'm feeling like if I were to go into that space or anybody is in that space and we could just say, you know what, the mind doesn't have to be so busy. Let's just be fully present and, and see what shows up. I also believe that that would help us to accept that from others as well and drop the ju- if we can ju- drop the judgments we place on ourselves and the expectations, um, then it'll allow us to help drop from all the others like that we hold on others. And then it just it just it feels like more of um an accepting and connected yeah. space to be right because we've all been there right you know we can so when we're fully present with someone let's say they're having they're just really overwhelmed and stressed and you know there's drama and things you know well mm-hmm. heck we all we all know what that feels like, you know, like <laughs> I know that Ooh, you know <laughs> I can feel your pain and I have so much compassion for that. And so that you're right, there is this acceptance and there is this admission that, you know, I too share that. And uh, I'm so grateful in this moment to to not be um, sidetracked by that. So I can hold the space for you and just to be really grounded with love and acceptance and compassion for what you're going through. And that works for any emotion, you know, grief or anger. This was very good my, with, uh, when I was raising my son when he was young and he would have anger episodes. Um, in the beginning of my parenting, I got hooked very much by that. And so I would meet his anger with anger and, yeah. and then later feel remorseful, like, oh, mm-hmm. I should know better. I'm, I'm the grown up, right? Oh, <laughs> and, oh. and, and then, you know, after I really moved into coaching and energy healing and, and uh, was moving along that path. Um, there was that awareness that that wasn't working and I needed mm-hmm. to show up differently for him and hold the space in a different way. And it's amazing mm-hmm. how fast when I just allowed him to have his emotions and loved him anyway. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, I loved him anyway, but yeah. expressing yeah. that in my, uh, how I responded uh, with him, that when he would have that, I would say, oh, I oh, know. It feels hopeless, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, and I would just say it out loud what he felt, and he, it, his anger would just melt. Yeah, you know. that's a, that's the word I was getting from. I feel with you. I feel like everything's just melting into a big pile of love and beauty. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that does lead me to a question, then, because um, I love that you. I de- you said, of course, I loved him. It was just how I was. How was I going to express it? And um, I think that's what it, right. Not right now, because it always happens um, in the world. That's how life is. But when we do get hooked, so to speak, I love that you said that, um, and we do find ourselves mirroring and expressing in that that negative, hurtful way, like say somebody judges me, and then I turn around and I judge them, and then I do feel such sadness after. Um, how? What would that look like to to heal or show compassion and understanding is it because like, you've been on such a journey of your, of, of your awakening and exploring. Um, would that look like we, maybe we should just be silent with it or, or draw a picture or write anything like that? Yeah. I mean, all of the above, you know, <laughs> it's kind of, what I say is move the energy. Okay. Ah. So that's some form of stuck energy that um, is, there's a judgment there, you know, self-judgment. Oh, I should know better. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, the shame, you know, these kind of things. And what we know mm-hmm. about these dense emotions, that they are expressions of blockages. And uh, we get blocked in the mind. It gets blocked in the body. And so basically just as a general rule, anything that doesn't feel good, that's also a, a sign that there's a, a lack of flow somewhere in the body and mind and it doesn't necessarily it doesn't matter that you know where that is but to get things moving and so you can get things moving by action journaling uh working out playing music dancing and you can also move that energy quietly by again bringing pure presence because when you bring pure presence within yourself and just sit with that emotion you are you are really calling in source energy 
to flow into your being. How could it not? Because that's what we are. We're pure presence. And when the mind gets out of the way and just is present with the emotion, basically what that does is that opens up the crown and allows what we are true nature to really flow beautifully through the body. So we can, it can, we can attend to that by being either fully present and sitting quietly and not feeling afraid to be present with that emotion. Or we can take action and journal about it and, uh, you know, move the energy that way. All kinds of ways to move energy. Um, yeah. Uh, does that answer that? It does. I love that you said express the blockage. I also have to write this down, move the energy. And I think we forget about that. And because when we are angry with, with others or ourselves, we do, we tighten up and we clench our, you know, imagine somebody all tight, like clenching their fist and uh, closing in on their chest. So the heart isn't there. And just, um, I think that's, that was a, that's a great way to remind people to, to do that, to let, let love lead that moving of the energy to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, two things that we're, we have one minute so so before this commercial that's fine um, but I was going to ask two things first of all I would love to hear what we can expect from poetic ascension and um, find out what is this all poetry is this what kind of book is this and also too if you wouldn't mind when we came back from commercial would you like to lead us in one of your beautiful poems or something that we could experience all together oh yes that's great I would love to so oh, good. Okay. So yeah. So poetic ascensions. Um. Oh no. We're going to commercial, and then we're going to talk about okay. ascensions. <laughs> okay. Okay. Sounds good. Connecting you with the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Om Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Om Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. More than 24 million Americans have an autoimmune disorder, and that number continues to grow. I'm Sharon Saylor, and I'm one of those 24 million. To put that number in perspective, cancer affects about 9 million and heart disease up to 22 million. That's why I've brought together top experts and those thriving regardless of their diagnosis to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information. Join me, Sharon Saylor, Friday night, 7 p.m. Eastern, for the Autoimmune Hour on Life Interrupted Radio to find out how to live your life uninterrupted. Me, a cat, moving in with a new human. It took a little getting used to. She has these weird games she likes to play, like this giant feather. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. She sticks it in my face. I swat it away. It's almost like she thinks I enjoy it. But seeing how much fun she gets out of it, well, I guess it makes it all worth it. Humans. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. Be that person. Adopt. Brought to you by the Ad Council and the ShelterPetProject.org. <laughs> We're back and sharing this lovely time with Corinne Holt. And uh, Corinne, I'm really excited to hear about Poetic Ascensions. And just to share with, with the listeners, especially why I'm very excited, is even when I, I feel like I just want to hang out at your website because it just offers so much love. And, and what I really respect and, and admire that you did share is that you come right out there and say, in beautiful words, mind you, that life is messy it it has those hard moments and it's tough and we can we can be struggling and just want to quit but then there's still this this uh, desire to be curious and to explore just be, because love does exist and so i have a feeling that poetic assumptions is just chock full of that but yet, but what can people expect when they do get that book yeah so it's um about 42 poems of um uh, different if you think of facets of a diamond, you know, it's one diamond, but there's all these angles and perspectives um, of it. And so there are uh, it, all these perspectives of what it means to attune to love. So we're coming at it. There's infinite ways, of course, but it's coming at it from all these different ways. 
And then I found in this grouping of 40 plus poems is that they kind of fell under camps and the camps being the big questions we were talking about, like, who am I and why do we suffer and what's the meaning of life and what's my relationship with the divine and what's my purpose? So some of the biggest questions we all tend to ask on the spiritual journey, these poems kind of fell under one of those categories, if you will. Mm-hmm. And so since it came to me to, to marry the art with the poetry, then um, it was, well, okay, this is a, an enhanced ebook, which means it's multi, a multimedia experience uh, as opposed to a normal ebook that's just text. So that's what has come first, which will be coming out in November. And then following that into the new year, kind of the official launch when we uh, have the print version of the book, which will be like a four color coffee table book and, um, and in the audio version. So what I'm doing is I'm putting the 40 poems because they're very meditative um, to music. And so the voiceover is, the, is gonna have music. Lead. So there'll be like poetic meditation, which will just you know, be the audio book. And then um, this also comes into the Poetry with Benefits mini films. So the event that I'm doing is called Attuned to Love Unplugged. And oh. Unplugged came to me because it's about unplugging from the frenzy of life, of uh, all the stimulus of you know, news and politics and, you know, our, our, just our busy lives. And uh, so it's a time for us to come together and create the space to attune and to come in the harmonious relationship with the highest version of ourselves. And so it came to me to use the poetry with benefit films to as a bridge. So when we come in, if we're stressed, it's the bridge to soften and relax the nervous system. So that way we can go into conscious conversation like you and I are having today, and then also spend some time in meditation because people often say to me, my clients will say, how do you how do you meditate when you're you know I'm I'm just like on ten all the time and I can't seem to power down and sit still, and um, and so I, I thought well number one we all have music that we love so if you have a playlist of relaxation music and most people know to do that and 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 so but it came to me to use to use these because they're a full media experience of visual sound and message with the poetry. And so, and they're short, Absolutely. you know, people are, have short attention spans. So they're three to five minutes. And, and so in my event, you know, we'll show on three to five minutes, maybe go into meditation, have some conscious conversation. And when it feels right, we go to the next one. And so, you know, we'll experience four or five of these and, and just a lovely, gentle, um, stress-free time together uh, with, with some positive media and our pure presence. So that's the un- that's the unplugged event. I just love that you said positive media. That is that already makes it nice. You know, just like oh, oh okay, I can do that. Well, if, if it yeah. if we could, I would just if you if you had. I know we didn't ask you to come prepared here, but if you did have one that was just a few minutes, I would love for us to experience that. If you if you wouldn't mind. Oh yes. Okay. So. On break, the break was lovely. It gave me a minute to kind of uh, oh. tune into what would be <laughs> what would be appropriate right now. So this oh, is a poem you. called "Led by Grace." Oh. Lay your mental striving down gently. Let it be. It's not a necessity. Not in the way you believed. For a moment, soften. Empty the busy from your brain. Turn your pockets wrong side out and pull out everything. You can go back to it all if you must, after you bathe in the healing waters of trust. Go ahead, sink deeper and deeper still until the weightless freedom is what you feel. And it goes on, but I'll, for the sake of time, I will stop mm-hmm. there. Oh, my goodness. Uh, can you repeat the line that said, bathe in the waters of trust? Is that what you said? Yes. Oh. So, uh, let me see here. Um, yes. You can go back to it all if you must, after you bathe in the healing waters of trust. The healing waters of trust. Oh, I just, because you know what's so funny is because I asked earlier about that, like what happens if we're just too afraid and we don't feel safe enough. But if you, if one, if I were to hear that line, right, like which I did, I could now say, what would it look like for me to be bathed in the healing waters of trust if I didn't know? Oh, I'm getting it. See? 
<laughs> yes. And uh, on, on my latest blog on my website, I talk more about you know how to return the love. And um, near the end, it's 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 not a striving. That's where the first line of this is: lay your mental striving down gently. Mm-hmm. Because in the beginning part of our kind of spiritual journey and process, and we're really, you know, really committed to personal development because we want to be our best selves. And so we're looking, you know, for exercises and things. And these are, these are great. It's a great first step. It's a natural first step because all of that is in service to becoming more aware. Mm-hmm. And, oh, wow, I'm, I'm aware that I'm being triggered right now. I'm aware that I didn't respond to that situation very well. I'd like to <laughs> improve mm-hmm. on that. And so... That's all personal development, and it's beautiful, and it's a, it's, a, it's a necessary, I think, first step. And then after we've been on that track for a while, then we go, okay, that's taken me this far, and now I, I need something more than that. And now the more becomes less, the less is more. Oh. Now we don't, yeah, we don't have to try to do steps or exercises necessarily. We can now experiment with the sinking into the healing waters of trust, so it's as easy as if you think about sinking into a bath. You know, we don't have to try hard, right? We just sink into the bath and feel the, ah, right? Yes, yes. Ah, and it just all melts away. And so when the mind surrenders into trust and in the infinite part of ourselves, and we really do that with a full commitment, we can we have that experience of, like, sinking into a warm bath. Mm. And, and it, so when you go into meditation, and if you just even, it can be as simple as that, is remember the feeling of sinking into a warm bath. And now, and you know, imagine those waters are waters of love. Oh. Oh, of love, too. And you know what's funny? I remember when you're little and you, you're having a bath and you wash your hair, then you put your head down, it tingles kind of. It just has that little awakening feeling. Um, oh, you yeah. just, when you said, um, lie it down. You said lie it down as opposed to, and I really like that you said, you know what, just lay it down for now. Um, you can always pick it up later. I like that. Um, it feels better to me than to having somebody tell me to let it go. And in, in saying, cause you know what, it's still there. I'm just laying it down gently. I actually believe you said gently. And it reminds me of, uh, remember the fainting couches? That you know that ah, oh, and then you faint, and they you yeah. scoop, you, you put on a couch like that, and that's our bodies when we do faint for any reason. It's because we we're so stressed, we we just can't take any more, and we just need to lay down. And... Yeah, gently. You know, and like the poem says, you can go back to it all if you must. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's not saying you know move on, get over it, uh, you know, mm-hmm. that's dumb, you know, it's no, it's, yeah. just, it's the noticing, well, I'm feeling triggered. Maybe what if I just consciously just set it down for a moment? I can go back to it, but yeah. give myself a break. And this is coming back to the space that we were talking about, creating the space, just lay mm-hmm. it down for a moment, put it over there. And it, you know, it's not ignoring it because obviously you noticed it. You're not in denial because it's like, oh, I noticed right. that that wasn't the best response that I've had. <laughs> yes. I know. And so, I mean, what we're laying down is the shame and the guilt. Oh. Um, let's just lay that down. And right. is it necessary to bathe in the in the storm of shame? Hmm. No. There's just so many lovely, it, like the imagery, like that's, and I can clearly see why you've done many videos and art because my mind has so many pictures in it and my heart too. Like they're just filled with these, these beautiful, lovely images and the words that you, they do have a certain vibration to them that are really helping. And we have about a minute, a minute and a half. And first of all, I want to just invite everybody, please go to attune to love.com um, or even better yet, Come see Corinne um, at the Facebook Live, what, it's, it's Poetic Ascensions Facebook Live series, and it's Sunday evenings. Is that correct? Yes. That's right. It's 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. 8 p.m. Eastern. Okay, because I would like everybody to go there, and you'll be doing that for a while, and this is the series. And if you could just say what that series is that you're doing, I think that will that we'll have enough time for that. Sure, absolutely. So. Uh, there, the 40 plus poems that I talked about. So we'll use one for each Sunday evening. So we'll be doing this for like 40 Sundays. <laughs> oh, Maybe wow. we'll break over the holidays. We'll see. But um, I'll, I'll announce that. But 
so that each each and it's a very you know short uh, 15 20 minutes tops um, where I'll read the poem and the title of the poem for instance led by grace would be the same the theme for the live show and then I'll read the poetry and then we'll talk about it a little bit very much like what you and I did right there and so I very much invite people's comments and questions and uh, when you were talking about the imagery it's when we're talking about our infinite selves and there's it's very abstract it can be abstract to the mind when we draw pictures and, and speak of metaphors it makes all of this a lot easier for the mind to kind of take in and surrender and so you know using this kind of language and imagery is very I found to be very helpful and I think that's why I was guided Oh. Well, I'm so glad that you were guided and that you are holding a space for us. And I invite everybody to visit you. It's Corinne with a, with a K, Corinne Holt. And I just want to thank you so much for sharing this time with me and everybody listening today. Well, thank you, Lisa, so much for inviting me to be here and to be with your community. And it's a great pleasure. And I love what you're doing and putting out in the world. Thank you so yeah. much for that. Well, thank you. Bye, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.